My name is Brock Noland, and I'm Vice President of Internal Engineering at BH Data. I'm going to demo SQL Morph to you. On the left-hand side, I can see the supported sources. We've got options here in the center of the screen. At the top, we have supported statements. So these are all the, the different languages and, and things that we support. We release every single Monday. So we're constantly adding features and, and bug fixes. You can see that progress on the change log. If you click the about button, uh, you'll be brought to our documentation, which talks a little bit more about the internals of, of how it works. What I'd like to show you is a, is a few translations. So here we have an Oracle query where uh, we're translating a view. If I hit translate, boom, uh, on the right-hand side, I've got the Snowflake SQL. You'll notice here that we're not just doing search and replace. We're actually doing what's called the transpilation of the SQL. For example, in Snowflake, you can't actually add a comment to a column after the view has been created. So we're translating these uh, column comments on the view up into the, the DDL of the actual view to make sure it works in Snowflake. Over here, we've got a, a table, another Oracle table, and you can see there's a, a few different interesting things. And the first is that in Oracle, a number without scale, you can still store scale. And it's not true in Snowflake. And so we convert those to uh, number 388 based on user feedback and um, just give you a warning indicating that that's happening. The next piece is we've actually got two virtual columns here. Virtual columns are like a, a mixed table and view. And what we're doing here is we're translating those to physical columns. We're eliminating the view aspect of it. But I can go ahead and change that to actually define the view as opposed to the physical columns. And then I can hit translate again. And I can see that the translation changes. We're just doing the non-virtual columns here. And then we create a view on top of that with the actual virtual columns here. Obviously, much, much more complex than just a simple search and replace. The last one here is just kind of a personal favorite, Hive Spark query. If you're a user of Hive or, or Spark, you'll probably be familiar with the lateral view, which is used to deal with arrays. And uh, that was traditionally a very difficult thing to translate to other SQL engine. But uh, Snowflake does have this lateral flatten syntax, which works from a, a translation perspective. We're really interested in feedback. There's a, a feedback button here. You can tell us didn't work or what you would prefer from a translation perspective. Um, feel free to use this very liberally. We really like getting feedback from you. The last thing that I'm going to show you is the API. Here's the API button. This gives you an auth token, but to actually use the API, you need to install it. So if I go to Google and I type SQL Morph API, uh, I'm going to be brought to the PyPy site. Our API is a Python-based API. You can either use it in Python or you can use it as a CLI. But if I go ahead and go over to the command line here, I can then install the SQL Morph API. And if I go back to this page here and just copy the command, the help command, It'll then give me the help. The API is pretty simple to use. What you need to do is give it a, a source language. Let's say MS SQL and a target language, which is Snowflake. We, and then target's gonna be Snowflake. That's really what we're targeting for SQL more. The other support for Impala, HANA, and Oracle is, is, quite, is quite limited. 
I need to specify my auth token. That is what I would get from the UI. I'd go over to the UI. I would click API. I click copy auth token. I'm not going to paste it it's sensitive, but I would paste that. And then you would say input. So this could be a file or it could be a directory. And you would say output. And uh, hit translate and you'd be off and running. We also have crawler support for Oracle, meaning if you're running this on your network and you, you give a SQL morph the database URL of Oracle, it'll actually reach out and, and pull the schema and, and objects and tables and views and stuff and do the translation itself. So you can either specify a file or directory of, of SQL and do the translation, or you can specify an Oracle database URL and it'll do that uh, translation for you.